Hey guys, so this is another lecture on government failure, and this time we're going to look in depth of how price flaws can affect the allocative efficiency of a market, and how that could in fact reduce our material living standards, or the overall material living standards of the economy. And the most pertinent example of a price flaw that I could think of, and that is most applicable to our daily lives, is the concept of a minimum wage. So what a minimum wage is, is that the, the government requires you by law, so it is required by law that firms pay a minimum per hour wage to employees. And this ensures that the government can achieve an equitable distribution of income. So it means that if you go to Macca's and you're willing to work for say $2 an hour, McDonald's is legally required to pay at least $15 an hour for you to work because the government believes that everyone deserves a the right to live a reasonable standard of living. And this can be very subjective, but the government believes that the current minimum wage allows people to live a reasonable standard of living. So let's see how this could actually cause inefficiencies in the market. So let's look at the labour market, for example, here. So the labour market, we have the labour market. And in the, the y-axis where we usually have P for price, we're going to look at wages instead. And in the x-axis, where we usually have quantity, we're going to look at the quantity of labor. So instead of price, we have wages, and quantity, we have quantity of labor. And now for simplicity reasons, we're just going to assume that the supply of labor is upwards sloping and it goes on forever. But as we know in reality, there is a finite limit to labor at this point here because there are only so many people in the economy that can actually work but for the simplicity and in the microeconomic sense the labor supply is infinite and we also have a downward sloping demand curve or demand for labor by firms so let's look at without any regulation or without a price floor what would be the market equilibrium for labor so we can see that the wage, let's say, is $10 an hour, and the quantity of labor demanded by firms is at Q1. And so we can see the market is at equilibrium. The consumer surplus, which is labor in this case, which is firms, sorry, is here. So this is actually in terms of firms. So consumer surplus, they're willing to hire labor's labor at this price or any price along here which is above 10, but they're getting it for $10. And the producer surplus, which is um, uh, the labor, or the people who offer their labor resource, is here, represented by here. So those who are willing to work at $5, but they're getting paid at 10. So marginal benefit, which equals $10, is greater than marginal cost, which is $5. That is just a very simple example. But let's look at what would happen if there is in fact a imposition of a minimum wage to the market? So we can see that the demand, let's redo this demand curve, this looks a bit messy. Let's just redraw this graph. Make this a little bit clearer. Okay. So we have wage. And we also have the quantity of labor. Have an upward sloping supply curve again for simplicity and a downward sloping demand for labor. Equilibrium price of $10. An equilibrium quantity of labor offered at Q1. So what happens if there is a market or a market minimum price or a minimum wage? What this means is that at $15, the government has introduced a price floor. 
at fifteen dollars. So labor costs are fifteen dollars or greater. And what this means is that because there is a minimum price floor, the quantity of labor supplied would in fact be at this point here at Q2. This means because the labor price has increased, or the, because the, there is a minimum wage, more people are willing to enter the market. But as you can see, at this point here, we're going to have a shortage in demand. Because the labor costs are so high, firms are just going to hire labor um, like that. They're, just, they're going to look for the best labor, and they're going to want to minimize their labor costs. And so this area here, this area here, represents a surplus in labor, which is also commonly referred to as unemployment. So let's apply um, cost-benefit analysis or consumer surplus, producer surplus and total surplus analysis to this graph here. So now let's just separate these graphs into separate areas. So we have A, B, C, make the line another line here. So at this price, this labor price here, only this much would be demanded. So we have D, E, and F. Okay, cool. As we can see, before there is a surplus, or before there is a minimum wage, we can see that the consumer surplus is in fact A, B, plus C. And this represents how much producers are willing to pay for labor. Producer surplus, or the people who offer their labor resources up, will be D plus E plus F. And so the total surplus in this economy will be A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F. But now since there is a minimum price floor, we can see that the producer or the consumer surplus is only those here who are willing to purchase labor at a price above $15. So the producer surplus or the consumer surplus with the price floor is in fact A. And so we can see the change of negative B minus C. The producer surplus has in fact increased if and only if the area here in B is greater than the area in C. So producer surplus is increased if B is greater than E. But now we can see that the producer surplus is those who are willing to offer their labor up for less than $15 an hour. So we have B, D, and F. So that represents all the producer surplus. So we have B plus D plus F. Now we can see the change will be plus B, but minus E. So if B is larger than E, producers have gained. So the labor market has gained. Now we can see the total surplus with the price was A plus B plus D plus F. And now the change in surplus would in fact be negative C minus E, which is this area here. And that represents a dead weight loss. And because there is unemployment in the economy, resource or labor resources are not utilized to their fullest potential, as they would have been at Q1 and ten dollars. So now you can see that although the government are, are doing good, or they believe they're doing good in setting a minimum wage, by um, by by allowing people to live a reasonable standard of living as determined by the minimum wage, it would actually increase the dead weight loss or the allocative inefficiency of the economy. And so those people who are willing to supply their labor at less than $15 are not actually getting jobs. And so that, that, that increases both cyclical unemployment as well as disguised unemployment. And that's a concept we'll talk about later on in the unemployment sector of the macroeconomics part of the course. So those people who become discouraged to find work because they know that firms will only hire labor if they believe that they're worth over $15 per hour. And so as we can see, 
that the dead weight loss here of negative C minus minus E is in fact caused by this minimum wage or this price floor. So the government in this case, although it is trying to find an equitable distribution of income, it has increased the dead weight loss or the allocative inefficiency of the economy.